Haymakers, today's video is all about audio because video without audio is surveillance. In this video, I'm gonna talk about voiceover microphones for doing narration. I'm gonna talk about lapel microphones for standing in front of the camera in the shop. And I'm gonna talk about Nat Sound little mini hypercardioids for getting uh, Foley audio in the shop. I'm also going to explain the differences between dynamic and condenser, cardioid pickup patterns versus shotgun, unidirectional versus omnidirectional, and finally some essential skills to use during productions, shoots, and post-productions for repairs and enhancements. Also, instead of doing a head-to-head -head 15 times, I'm going to record with all of these mics together in different scenes and switch between them as we go so you can hear maybe a little bit of what stuff sounds like. Now while I swap over to the lapel microphones or lavaliers, I need you to do me a favor and hit the like button on this video so other people can benefit from this. I'm a brand new channel and I want to help as many people as I can. So take a moment, hit that like button, and I'll be right back. Well, for you, it's going to be an instant, but whatever. Be right back. Most of your voiceover and narration microphones use a cardioid pickup pattern that's unidirectional and they're condenser powered. Cardioid refers to uh, a pickup pattern that looks like a mushroom over the top of the microphone. With no sound being heard from the back, you need to face directly at the microphone unless you are using something called a hypercardioid. Now, it could be hypercardioid or supercardioid. It has the same mushroom pickup pattern, but they can receive some sound, 30 to 50% of the main volume from behind. You'll use stuff like this, not necessarily for doing your voiceover narration, but to catch gnat sound inside of your shop or or studio. Now these are great for catching that sound, but they also catch reflections. So you want to make sure that as sensitive as these are, you have put as much sound deadening in as possible. Now what's beautiful about these microphones being so sensitive is because they are condenser microphones. Condensers are opposite from dynamic microphones because dynamic microphones use your voice or maybe sound pressure from an instrument to move a magnetic coil and turn that mechanical energy into electrical energy. Condensers still do the same principle but they use electrical energy uh, assistance supplied from the recorder, the mixer, or maybe the camera in phantom power to allow the microphones to hear at a more sensitive level or further away. Now, even with the added power, you want to try to keep your microphones around 6 to 12 inches from your face or as close as possible so that you can record in that negative 20 to negative 6 dB range. So because your floor noise is going to be right around negative 40 per to maybe negative 30 decibels to counteract air conditioning or uh, you might have PC fans or shop noise uh, in that floor noise. Now another quick tip is to do voiceovers inside of a closet with lots of clothes or maybe in a heavily carpeted room with lots of objects that can uh, break up the sound wave. So it's, it's a moment where having a cluttered room is actually helpful. Now if you are trying to decide what to do with a room, you need to have soft surfaces on three of the six sides. So that would be carpet on the floor and soft surfaces on two adjacent walls opposing the other two. So at least three out of the six sides. Another tip, make sure your lavalier microphones are not placed on the side, but are directly in front of you, again, as close uh, to your mouth as possible. I know many of you hate lavalier microphones or also known as lapels because you're trying to get them on a t-shirt, you're dealing with wires in the shop, your beards get in the way, whatever the issues are. There's lots of options from Sennheiser, Shure, Sony, and even Rode. Now Rode even came out with this ridiculous gerbil that I'm sure no professional maker is ever going to use this thing. I mean, I like it. Okay, so one professional maker likes it, but it, it's not going to catch on. I like it. Looks totally normal to me. All right, well, maybe no seasoned maker will like it. I like it because I can put it on my hat. 
And I don't have any of those stupid wires to deal with. All right, let's move on to shotguns and hypercardioids. What I want to explain here, there's a difference between a cardioid pickup pattern, a hyper or super cardioid pickup pattern that has the normal cardioid but pulls in reverse, and a shotgun or rifle microphone. These microphones can pick up from long distance away. Like right now, I'm talking directly at it. The uh, Zoom H6 uh, shotgun microphone has a little more stereo and it can pick up around it. But this NTG and the Sennheiser ME are meant to pull from a long distance away. So you can actually have this about five feet away from you and pick up nice, rich, warm sounds without having to wear these lapel lavaliers or the Rode gerbil. All you're trying to do is collect your voice and your sound waves as high as possible without hitting zero dB and staying away from your negative 30 to negative 40 decibel floor noise. If you record in that negative 20 to negative six range, then you've got some fluctuation that you can work with. But as soon as you hit zero dB and you get way too loud, you have cut the tops of the sound waves off and there is no repair. It's kind of like overexposing your shot. Once you've hit that peak, you can't come back down. But if you go too low, then when you amplify your voice to get into that negative 20 to negative 6 range and you were recording at negative 30, well, you're bringing the floor noise up with it and then you're just getting that nasty sound of the air conditioner and your refrigerator and neighbor's dog barking or whatever, maybe kids running around the house. One more thing you can do whenever you're catching your gnat sound is what's called Foley. Foley artists are people who just record nature and record sounds to be used uh, in productions in replacement for whatever sounds are happening in the production. So for those of you who like to do time-lapse fast motion, well, your frequencies change whether you're at two, four, six, eight X speed. If you go in and record your saws and tools at different speeds, you could have a library or a repository of sounds to put into your productions so that when you're there, maybe somebody's walked in or you want to listen to music or uh, watch a TV show, then you can have sound in your shop and you're going to replace the tool sound with Foley, stuff you've pre-recorded on another date. Pro tip. The studio is an ideal place to shoot because it's treated. Mine is treated so well that I actually have a two-ton mini-split air conditioning unit running while shooting those previous scenes. I will kill this one here in a moment, but I want to shoot with bad audio and that sound to get you to understand some of the perks of what I'm talking about here. The workshop is mostly difficult because of hard, flat surfaces. There's no foam. There's, there is a lot of junk in here to break up the reflections or the sound waves that are bouncing around, but it's not as ideal as shooting in the studio. Whether you're in the studio or out here, the key is to keep your microphone 6 to 12 inches away. But for this scene, I'm actually shooting the microphones are 4 feet away from me on the other side of the teleprompter, and I wanted to prove a point with it on how good some of the shotgun microphones could sound. Previous scenes that you saw, I recorded every scene with raw audio. There is no processing beyond normalizing. Normalizing is an effect in all of your audio applications or even Premiere Pro and some of your video applications, which brings the highest peak of the sound waves up to zero dB or I normally set it at negative three. If I take 30 to 90 seconds of NAT sound, I can actually create a noise print and I can use that for noise canceling, similar to your noise canceling headphones that reduce the ambient sound. But you don't want to reduce the ambient sound to complete silence because that makes viewers feel very weird and they don't really know why. Yeah, see, it's kind of weird when you have no sound at all. 
I'm going to move the mics a little closer and wrap this up with polished audio from the shotguns and maybe one or two of these lobs. And as you hear the difference, I'm going to use the noise print to cancel out uh, the air conditioning and some of the fans you hear going. As you can see, I've moved the microphones a little bit closer to me and I probably should have moved the lavaliers a little higher. Uh, maybe you're hearing some beard scratching. Another reason for using that sound is to give a bed for silent moments, but also to help transition to a new shot. If you go back to the previous scene where I was in the studio, I slowly added the shop Nat sound so that there was not a hard cut into the new noise. I'm going to do more post-production tips and some upcoming videos along with um, some videos to cover cameras and camera mounts similar to what we've done with lighting and here with audio that's going to be sliders cranes 4k cams dslrs uh, cinema cameras gopros etc if you don't mind please take a moment click like on this one if you've made it this far then you've enjoyed it and if you could tell me which tip from today you might use put it in the comments i'd really appreciate to know that something went something was useful to somebody at some point in this. Now, if this is your third or fourth or whatever video, hit that subscribe so you can get more access to some of the hidden ones that I've got private. And I'm gonna be putting them out in live streams as we do live stream trainings and giveaways here in a couple of months. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. And as a present for staying this long, uh, I'm gonna find something fun to add here at the end. I don't know what it is yet, maybe some Foley recording. But thank you all for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Hey, what about me? I've got the Rode Wireless Go. I think it's hip to be square. What? He's waiting on you to move. Uh, oh, my bad, yeah, all right. Make sure to click subscribe and that little bell so you can be notified when this video and other ones like it are done so you can see exactly how it's made.